Good day, this is Professor Resnick again, and today I want to talk about something new and I hope interesting to you all, which is capitalist competition and how capitalist competition can result in relative surplus value, which is the next theme um, of Marx in present, as presented in, in Capital Volume 1, which is our reading and the other readings that have been assigned to you. So what we're going to discuss here is uh, capitalist competition the business cycle again and relative surplus value. And what I want to try and show to you is how capitalist competition um, is going to shape uh, markets and we're going to get again this, this uh, tendency for the economy to decline and the economy to, to expand. So capital, capitalist competition on one hand is going to produce two different tendencies. On one hand uh, for the economy the capitalist economy to contract and to get a contraction, that is to get a, a downturn in capitalism. And on the other hand, that very process of market competition is going to set in motion forces that will push the economy into expansion. Okay, so let's see what we got here. To do capitalist competition, I'm going to assume the following. We have a variety of different industries across the economy. And again, I'm going to split them into these two broad kinds, the wage good industries and the means of production industries. And in these various industri industries, I'm going to assume that we have different capitalist firms competing with one another, producing a fairly homogeneous uh, commodity in, across these different industries. So let me start. I'll start with the automobile industry to, as a concrete example. So I'm going to start here with, with uh, start here with the C and the V and the S and the W for these, let's say, three capitalist um, uh, uh, enterprises. Um, General Motors, say Honda and Ford. I understand there are many, many more, but it's enough with just three to show this example. So we have three uh, independent capitalist enterprises operating in the same industry, don't forget now, private enterprise, okay, three different boards of directors that are appropriating the surplus produced by these different laborers in General Motors, Honda, and Ford, okay, in the so-called automobile industry. And I'm going to assume for a moment they're producing a fairly homogeneous product called transport, you know, the transportation, moving people from one location to another. Okay. And they all are alike. So I'm going to start with, in these magics, they all buy the same quantum of means of production, say $4. To make life easy for us, let's assume that, that um, a dollar is the same as one hour of abstract labor again. Don't, don't lose that, okay? Um, if you want, it takes one hour to produce um, a, a, a dollar um, in terms of, uh, if you recall, uh, that gold is the commodity. So it takes one hour to produce an ounce of gold. An ounce of gold is deemed by the state to a dollar. If, if, you, if you bother with that, just assume the state uh, implicitly sets uh, the value as one dollar. That, that is, as one hour equals one dollar, or one dollar equals one hour. That's what this is. So we have here two value of labor power is two dollars or two hours, surplus is two, and hence the total value of cars is eight dollars. And I'm going to assume the number of cars produced is one, and I'm going to assume here that the uh, rate of profit, the calculated rate of profit then would be two over six, two four six, that's a third, and the composition of capital, that's C over C plus V, is uh, 4 over 6. Uh, 4 over 6, what is that? 2 thirds. Okay. And finally, the, we put over here, the price in this world, that is the total value over the things being produced here, would be 8. Is that correct? This is 24 divided by 3, let me erase this here and get, make it more clean, 
and hence 24 divided by 3 would be 8. That's the price in the system, so everybody sells for 8. Um, I think we're ready to go. Suppose, let's just take it, take, no, Honda, you know, it's, it's an appropriate example. Suppose Honda takes a private action um, in, the, uh, in the enterprise Honda Automobile Company. The board of directors of Honda decide that they are going to purchase additional means of production, the Delta C, of say four, do, four more, four dollars more or four more hours. All right? And I'm going to assume um, that there's a new technology associated with these means, additional means of production that Honda Board of Directors decides to purchase, which is robots. So Honda goes out and purchases four dollars more, this becomes eight. Okay. Now, you can say, well, how, where does that four come from? Well, partly it's financed by the surplus value of Honda, but partly Honda goes out and borrows money from banks and persuades the bank bankers, a subsumed class, persuades those bankers to lend Honda the additional money so it, it can expand the C. Or maybe Honda is, and or Honda issues new stock and persuades uh, in individuals, uh, new stockholders, to purchase its stock, and so the Honda will have then, in this uh, IPO, initial uh, public offering, will have then additional resources to purchase the C. So, you know, it goes to the bank. So you've got the three broad ways to finance this. That, that is out of surplus value of Honda, borrowing on the market, um, or issuing stock to stockholders, uh, new stockholders, it gets the additional re resources for the Delta C. So, 8, 10, 12, this becomes then an expansion of 12, this becomes 28, and next I'm going to assume that the additional means of production that Honda has employed here allows Honda to produce more cars. So this becomes 4, okay? Let me leave these for the moment, um, or leave, me, leave this the same, but let me change this here, because Honda has increased its, its um, index of mechanization, so it now is 8 over um, 10, so this has become a bigger number. It went from 0.67 to 0.8, and in your reading, Marx spends a lot of time discussing this mechanization the, the, uh, uh, during the, this period of time that in which he's writing in which capitalist firms, firm after firm across the different capitalist industries are becoming more mechanized and one way to look at that is that their ratio of C to C plus V is rising very rapidly as they are purchasing more machines and as I said embodying new technologies. Okay? The final one I want to put on the board now is this one here. It's the average cost of a business. So that would be C plus V divided by UV. So initially we have, uh, for General Motors, that would be six dollars divided by one, six for Ford, because they're similar. And it was six dollars for Honda, but now it's a smaller number, 10 divided by two. So Honda has become, as a result of purchasing uh, more C and raising its productivity, it has become the least cost producer in this industry. No minor matter, as we're going to see in a moment. So let me summarize what we've got here. Okay. As a result of Honda's private action, it's become the least cost producer. It's raised its uh, composition of capital. Okay, as in doing that. So one message is a capitalist can become the least cost producer, the lowest average cost, by raising its composition of capital. And I'm assuming here okay, that Honda did increase its C, so it went out and it raised the, the C, its cost went up. But the denominator increased proportionally more so that the ratio, the average cost, fell. And that's the, the, the subsumed class of managers in Honda 
has to make that calculation and persuade the bankers and our stockholders that they should provide the resources because the average cost will fall, allowing Honda to become the least cost. And we're going to see what that's going to deliver to Honda in a particular uh, moment. Next, okay. As a result of this, the price of a car has fallen from eight to what it was to now seven. Okay, so the the new price of, of a car is 28 divided by 4. The price has become 7. L let's examine that for a moment. Okay. What's this 28? Where does this come from? Well, this is the total value. General Motors produces one car at 8. Ford produces one car for... Four six eight, and Honda now produces two cars at the unit value per car, twelve divided by two. That's six. Okay, so if I did this right, it's twelve, twenty, twenty-eight, divided by the number of cars, two, three, four. So this is a weighted average, it's an average, and the seven, once again, is the socially necessary abstract labor time to produce a car, and what it averages over, as you can see, this goes back to several lectures, the concrete labor of each of these private capitalist producers, GM, Honda, and Ford, in this particular industry. So this is the weighted average, that's what a socially necessary abstract labor time is in this this example I'm giving you, giving you of the concrete labors averaged over all the different quantities of, uh, produced in this particular industry. So, for the private time, the social clear is seven, seven, seven. Okay, so that's the, the social in this particular industry. But the private time is different. The private time here is 8, 6, 8. So we have a divergence, okay, in this example, which is one of the things we want to show, a divergence between the private and the social. General Motors and, and uh, Ford are above the social, whereas Honda, because of its offens offensive action, that is raising its productivity, is below the social. All the firms come to market, I'm assuming a competitive industry, that means everybody sells at the same price, okay, the, the assumption of competition, one market, one price, they all sell for $7 or seven hours. Okay? They have no choice, that's what competition means. The market dictates the price. So everybody sells for this socially necessary abstract labor time of $7 or seven hours. So let me then put on the board a new uh, table. Okay? Let me, I'm gonna race this and get a new table going. Here, let me just, to remind us, put this seven here. Here I have the revenue, General Motors, $1,000. 